In this video, we're taking boring product photos and utilizing color to make them pop. You won't find a more in-depth guide on YouTube. We're walking through how a beginner, intermediate, and pro photographer uses color in their product photos to create eye-catching imagery. These photos will help you gain more product photography clients and you don't need much to get started. So let's get into it. Color and product photography. This will be the most in-depth guide you find on YouTube. Using color is a fantastic way to capture the attention of people with your photos. If you're just building your portfolio, color will make you stand out. And when you work with brands, these photos will make more people click on them and the brand's going to love you as their photographer. By the way, my name's Chris. I teach photography and creative business. I wanna say a special hi to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. This video is part of my product photography series. We've already covered the importance of product photography. We've covered lighting setups, creative product photography, and stop motion. Today, we're talking about color. Utilizing color opens up so much creative opportunity. You may be thinking that you can only do simple shots on a one colored backdrop, but that's just the beginning. I'll walk you through how beginners, intermediate, and pro photographers use color to create amazing visuals. The first question to answer is, why does product photography matter? 99% of the time, it's about trying to sell something. In the world of e-commerce, product photography has never been more important. By adding color to product photos, it helps them pop and capture attention. When a potential customer is scrolling Instagram and they see a bright colored photo pop up, they might be more likely to take a couple seconds, look at the photo, and click through to learn more about that brand. Now, if you can be the photographer that generates clicks for companies, you're going to be able to make a lot of money. Adding color to your arsenal is a crucial step in that direction. Choosing the right colors is going to be an important thing to consider. Should you choose complementary colors to the product? Should you choose the same color as the product? What if you want to use two colors as the backdrop? This is where you can get creative. As a photographer, it's up to you to choose the best colors for the scene. Some people are naturals at this. For some, it takes a while to learn. I'm kind of in the middle here. A quick hack to find the right colors to use is to use the color wheel. All you need to do is pick a color and then go directly across it and there's your complementary color. Now, color theory is a really complicated subject and that's just the starting point. If you think two colors look good in your scene, use those. See how the final result looks. Might be good, might be bad, but at least you tried. The more you do this stuff, the better you'll get. Now, let's put this all to work. Today, our subject is gonna be this Loco coffee can. This is a brand from the East Coast that makes canned cold brew coffee. Now, the flavor we're using today is our cold brew coffee with oat milk. I like the yellow orange tones, so we're gonna use this for our color proc photography. Now, if you're trying to work with companies like this, I actually put together a guide on how to land your first clients. It's a free short checklist with action steps to take. That's how I was able to work with over 45 brands during the pandemic. That's linked down below. It's free, go download it, grab a copy. Now, the beginner setup is starting off with a single color. When using a single color, there's usually gonna be three options to start out with. One, we can use the same color as the product. So here we can use a yellow orange that matches a can. Number two, we can use a complementary color that looks good with this yellow orange. Now, if we look back at the color wheel, we'll see that yellow and purple go together. We see orange and blue go together. I actually opted to go with a light blue for this one. I thought it's a bit more subtle and it really allowed for the can to shine. Another reason I actually went with the blue is because the company has another SKU that's blue. So it's on brand with their colors. Speaking of which, some companies will give you brand guidelines to stick to when photographing. So if that's the case, your creative process becomes way easier because you already know what colors you can choose from. Finally, I want to go through one more scenario. It's when the product has a very subtle splash of color. I've seen this in a lot of my client work with product photography, where the product will have just a tiny bit of color. So here I have this product from a different company. It's mainly black and white, but the flavor has this light blue color here. Let me show you guys right here. So what do you think we should do in this situation? We can use light blue to really emphasize that blue design on the label. All right, so enough talk. Let's up the can with a light blue background. First, let's talk about the colored papers I'll be using today. 
These are from a company called Savage. I'm not sponsored by them, they're just good backdrops. They're high quality, they come in a bunch of sizes. I have the smallest size back here. It's 26 inches and it's plenty for this type of product photography. Now this paper is called seamless paper because there's no seam in the background where your shadow would land. Now you have to set this up properly so that when your light hits it, it's actually distributed evenly. You wanna have a generous curve in the back there so that you can achieve this seamless look. The reason to use colored paper instead of switching out the background in Photoshop is because of reflections. When you shoot on paper like this, the blue is going to be reflected onto the product that you're photographing. Now, this is really subtle, but if you go into Photoshop and try and mask out your subject and change the color of the backdrop to let's say yellow, you're gonna notice blue reflections on that can that you got from the paper. For that reason, I always use different colored backdrops when I need new colors. Now our light source here is gonna be a simple flash setup on a 45 degree angle to the side of the product and 45 degrees above it. This is a classic setup that I love to use. I use this for a lot of my product photography because it just adds a little bit of depth to the scene and it lights the product slightly unevenly to give it a unique look. If you wanna learn more about lighting, I made an entire guide that goes really deep on this subject. Check that out after this video. Now our camera is gonna be set up on a tripod right here. Uh, we're gonna be shooting it straight on to start out with and we're using a uh, aperture of f8 to make sure that the product stays in focus. We're using a shutter speed of 1 250th and ISO of 100. Now, if you're using continuous light, those settings are going to vary just a bit. I'm using flash, so it's super powerful, so I'm able to get away with settings like that. Um, if you're using a continuous light source, you're probably gonna have to adjust your shutter speed or your ISO to get proper exposure. Now, let's grab our product from over here, and we're gonna wanna make sure that it's nice and clean and there's no fingerprints on it. Uh, when you're handling stuff like this, fingerprints tend to get on it, and they're hard to remove in Photoshop, and it takes some time. So what I do, I just grab my, uh, my microfiber cloth right here, wipe off the front, and we're pretty much good to go on that front. Now we just wanna make sure that we have the label nice and centered in our shot right down there, and we shoot away. And that's really it for the beginner setup. Now we'll be editing all these at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned to see how I can make the color pop even more in the edit. Real quick, if you're getting any value at all, please drop a like below and let's move on to the intermediate setup. So remember how we talked about using seamless paper? Well, now let's add a seam. We're gonna be introducing another color into the scene and using two colors is a great way to elevate your color product photography and really make it stand out. I like using complementary colors when I do this kind of thing, so let's bring in some yellow. Now you might notice that this yellow is not the exact same color as like the yellow on the can. That's something we'll fix in Lightroom later on. So we'll be using our hue sliders to make sure that both of the yellows match. Um, I have this yellow paper and an orange paper, but I don't have the paper that's quite like this. I know I said before we shouldn't be changing the color um, in Photoshop and that's still true. So with this situation, uh, the reflected yellow that comes up on here will be adjusted with those hue sliders within Lightroom and will be good on that front. Now, there's a lot of ways we can use two colors. I'll be walking through just a few examples, but don't let me limit your imagination. All right, so first off, we have just a blue backdrop and a yellow foreground. I chose to do it this way because we're still going to be getting that yellow against the blue for the complementary colors. Remember how we talked about that black and white product with uh, that little splash of blue? So what do we have here? we've got a black and white product with some splash of color down there. Now with that, we can align the line right here with the horizon back there and kind of have the blue on the yellow and then this slight yellow here on this yellow. So now we're gonna to wanna to place our product down and adjust our camera height or product to make sure that that horizon is where we want it. Find it exactly where we want it and snap away. Now let's put that up on the screen and see how that looks. I think it looks pretty sick. Now that's just one way to use multiple colors. What if we made a diagonal line running across the back? What diagonal does is it's gonna make your photo stand out even more when people are scrolling on social media. When they're on social media, they're scrolling down along the vertical, they read text on the horizontal, but if we introduce a diagonal, that kind of breaks up that mundane process. It pops up in front of them and they stop and look for another second, and this helps raise brand awareness for your clients, and that's why they're paying you. So let's try and line the camera up and get those diagonal photos. Now this can be a little tricky, so take the camera off the tripod, move around a bit, and find an angle that really works for you. 
In this situation, just take a bunch of photos and see what really looks best. Your focus might be a little off in this situation because you're no longer on the same plane as the front of the label. So play around with your different aperture settings to make sure that everything is in focus when you're shooting these diagonal shots. Now there's one more way I wanna show you how to use multiple colors in this intermediate section. So let's grab the backdrop and clip it in down here on my table. By the way, if you're curious how to get this backdrop set up like me, I have an entire guide on how to build a backdrop stand like this yourself. After you're done watching this video, go and watch that. Now for this new setup, there's no rules. Just use your camera off the tripod and start snapping away. This is kind of a meta setup because you're showing the backdrop papers, but they look oh so cool. We have our product standing up right here. You can mess around with the positioning of it, put it down, see what you like. You want to get creative with this process, experiment, see what sticks with you, and really try and make something magical here. Whenever I'm doing product photography, I'm experimenting all the time. I don't have a formal photography education, but I spent a very long time experimenting and getting good and just seeing what worked. If you're just getting started, then yeah, you can copy what I'm doing here. But as you do that, slowly you're gonna try and build your own style. And that's where the magic really happens. All right, we're done with beginner, we're done with intermediate. Let's see what pros do. So as a beginner, we learn the rules of photography. As an intermediate, we apply those rules in unique ways. Now, as a pro, we're here to break some rules. After watching this, you might start to prefer the intermediate or even beginner photos to the ones I'm about to show you. But having these in your photography arsenal will set you apart from other photographers. First, let's get this can wet. All right, I got my spray bottle. And what I really want to do here is just kind of emulate what it would look like if you took this out on a hot summer day. We want to convey it's nice and refreshing. I just use a simple spray bottle with water in it and give it some nice sprays. You want to make sure that you're spraying the entire label and your thumbs or fingers aren't in the way of where, of where you're spraying. Because when you're taking it out of the fridge, the entire can is gonna be soaked. So we wanna show that in the actual photos. Next up, let's break some rules. Starting with this light dome right here. We're getting rid of this diffusion and we're gonna use some harsh light. So harsh light is really gonna change the look of your image. It's gonna give your can some really hard shadows and really make those water droplets pop as well. It's gonna change how the light hits the cans and it's gonna give the can just a unique look. The position of your light source is also gonna really affect how the shadows look. So let's take a few photos at different positions of the light and see how that goes. Just like before, we wanna change the, the angle of where we're shooting constantly and just try and get some awesome shots. You can try shooting the can straight on. We can try shots from above to the side. We just add some interesting angles to the scene and see what sticks. Now, the next thing I wanna do is actually add some props to our scene. I know with color photography, a lot of people don't really use props, but we're experimenting here and seeing what we can do. So this is cold brew and I wanna show how it's easy to use and gets you going. I'm gonna grab my laptop and bring it into this scene. All right, so I got my laptop here. Um, what we're doing is we're just gonna build out a scene with the laptop, with the can, and just make some magic happen. And set it to a uh, 10 second timer so that we can use our hands in the scene as well. So what we're doing is just building out this fun little lifestyle scene here. Um, we're gonna have the can, we're gonna have the laptop, we're gonna make it so like it looks like I'm typing on the laptop. Again, we're trying to convey how this product helps people focus, it's very convenient, and it's just an all around great product for, uh, for working. All right, so we got that built out. All we have to do is come in here, uh, hit the shutter for 10 seconds, come in here and just kind of be our own model. So shutter goes off and we're good to go. So hopefully that came out great. We're gonna load all these up into, into my computer and we're gonna do some editing. So stay tuned for that. Now for the edit. The edit's gonna be pretty straightforward for this type of photography. We're gonna do some Lightroom adjustments and then go into Photoshop and finish up in there. So we're gonna do the usual, what I usually do with, so we're gonna do some basic adjustments here. So I usually drop the highlights a bit, up the shadows a tad, don't really touch the whites and adjust the blacks a bit to add some more contrast here. I don't touch texture much, don't touch clarity, nor any haze. I usually up the vibrance in this type of photography, um, plus 10. We'll play more with the color in the HSL panel. For the tone curve, just give it a very slight S curve, increase contrast uh, slightly. Now we go down to HSL. So I mentioned during uh, the earlier part that we want to adjust the yellow of the paper to match the can. Um, so what we can do is click on 
this button right here. Now drag our cursor over the yellow we want to adjust and uh, move it towards the direction we uh, we want. So we don't really want to change the can too much here, but we can see the can changing as well. So instead of doing this, we're going to go back here and just adjust this green slider all the way here. We can already see the yellow paper changing a bit. Change this yellow just a tad, maybe adjust this orange of the can so we stay uh, consistent with our initial coloring. And already we can see this color changing a bunch. So let's go into our saturation and enhance this color some more. Um, I'm going to grab the yellow slider here and really bring out the color of this paper here, make it pop a bit. I think that looks much better than before. Next, I want to brighten up the blues a bit. So we're going to go to the luminance and just select our blue slider here, brighten that up a tad. I think this whole image needs to be brightened up a bit. So let's go back to our basic panel, hit the exposure slightly, um, bring back some contrast by lowering the blacks and we can adjust this to our liking. Um, I think already, what we're seeing is uh, looking really good. What you'll notice are some imperfections in the can. So we have this reflection here as well as this reflection here from, uh, I believe that's coming from our, our table. Um, so all of this can be removed in Photoshop. Now this video won't be a comprehensive Photoshop review or tutorial, I should say, but let's go in and see what we can accomplish in Photoshop with just some very, very quick edits. So I just hit Command E on my keyboard to get into Photoshop. We're going to hit Command J to duplicate the layer here. And what I always do is just uh, get the spot healing tool, adjust it to a decent size, and then we're going to zoom into our can and remove all these imperfections. So um, a lot of the time your client products will have a lot of imperfections like this. So we're going to have to zoom in and remove all of them. Product photography is one of those, one of those areas of photography where perfection is pretty much necessary. I mean, you're charging your clients for a certain degree of work and they expect to have the best photos possible coming from you. So what I'm doing here is removing all of these little smudges. Now I could be here for a while getting rid of all this dust because like the more you zoom in, the more dust you see. So I'm gonna skip that part for this photo or for this video. Now that, that we're down here, there is some other stuff we have to get rid of. So the a lot of the times the text on cans will have will not be perfect like this. So we can use a spot healing brush tool to bring in um, some of that black on the text. So you're gonna do that as well. Your paper, your paper gets dirty a lot of the time, so you have to clean up your paper. And finally, we're not going to touch the reflection nor uh, this right here. That's a pretty complex edit and kind of beyond the scope of this video. Um, but if you do get rid of those small imperfections, this photo will look fantastic. So let's hit save on that and go from there. The product photography space is an amazing place to be right now. There's a lot of opportunity out there. And if you like this video, I made an entire guide on creative product photography right here. Check out that product photography playlist as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.